did our rogue do yesterday? Our rogue went seven. Well, it was a bit awkward. Catch reading paper. I should draft hunter. Yeah, hunter's pretty good. What if it goes twelve shady? Monk has. Well, I have a. Um, I have a mage twelve from yesterday and a hundred twelve from today. I got a bit of a buffer for YouTube. Go for the record of most 12 O's in a row. <laughs> I don't even know what the most 12 O's is. I don't even know if I have two in a row at some point. Have you tried Minstrel? Yeah, it feels a little awkward. I think the meta's a bit too fast to get a good Minstrel off. We're getting a really light deck for now. I had some coffee. You guys think about this. Bone Champion, probably, but the amount of two drops make it a bit weird. See you in a minute. I don't love Sunwalker right now. Even though it's a good 6 drop, that's the problem. Warbear, Scorcher, Pitcroc. We could try for the auto wins with the Tolvir. But then we're getting a lot of two mana cards in our deck. Does this feel like a Primordial Drake deck? I don't think I ever draft Primordial Drake Rogue, but Primordial Drake is the strongest card. Backstab sounds sick with two drops. Mm. I think the more two drops you have, the less you want the backstab, the more you want the eviscerate. I think the backstab is there for helping you win the early game. I don't think we need much help right now. Two one drops and a bunch of twos. The cold blood makes the eviscerate also a little better, so I think it is an eviscerate deck. Shroom Brewer works with Tolvir. Scorcher is just good in general. I don't think we look at the deck and say, oh, it's not a Scorcher kind of deck. I think we say, well, I'm going to assume that I hit something to put down here and that it's still okay to have Scorcher. Scorcher up with worms and stuff. But Shroom Brewer is definitely not bad here. Got the 
up here. Alright, that was a metal diggy. This is quite the pack here. We have synergy with our own Dragon Slayer. That is also true. Is Poison not a good card anymore? No, it is a good card. But the deck doesn't really need it, and Scorcher is fine. Poison is better when you require combo activation, and currently the deck does not require that. I mean, we have two combo cards, but we have Firefly, Warg, and a bunch of two mana cards. Archer is reach. I think it is Archer. I don't think I want to step. It's pretty awkward. Probably still Sap. Eviscerate is good. Stacking Eviscerates is fun. Um, this is not really a fan of knives kind of deck right now. I think I'll take the poison. Scorcher at least leaves a body behind. I don't think I want to pick. Yeah. Bigger card. Tar is still really good. Could be that Spellbreaker is better, but I'm still hoping to turn the draft a little bit around. Make it at least a little bit more mid rangey. Ooh, I don't actually know. Worm is slow. Let me have a look. I've been a little less all in on the worm lately. But Rogue does not have that good late game pushing power. 90% of the games go past turn 5. Yes, uh, worm costs 8 mana though, so. <laughs> it's not so relevant. Alright, they're both doing quite well, but that's because they're row cards. Never fan? No, never fan here. I think the deck is fast enough that it just wants to lock down the worm. I think if you have a higher quality deck, you might just go ahead with the sapper and say, screw it. Have you played World Kick Master? No. What is that? Why draft Worm if you can draft Golems? That's what I'm saying, yeah. Usually when the enemy rogues plays a sapper, it benefits me. Uh, it's highly unlikely. We do have the Eviscerate and the Cold Blood. Maybe we really don't want to go up to 8. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it is a Sapper. I think we're going to try a step of 8 a little bit from Worm. Just also as an experiment. There's so many biggies this meta. Uh, not that many. Pit Croc. Pit Croc will be better for our deck, right? Because it has reach. Hmm. Oh, okay. We take that one. Oh, man, the, the difference, right? The difference is huge. Yeah, I think I'm going to be less high on Worm for a little bit and see how that goes. The new weapon gets a lot better in this deck. I agree. I think it's still Basilisk. Basilisk and Rogue is stupid. You can protect it with your dagger, you can protect it with your early game. Tomb Pillager is good for the curve, but I would say it's quite a bit worse than Basilisk. And Bazaar Mugger is nice, 
but I'm not sure for that deck. What is the reason for you to craft that many golden cards? Uh, I don't really have a different use for the dust. If you're an arena main, you usually just make golden cards. If you play constructed as well, you save it, but I don't play constructed. Yeah, Basilisk, 62.5% win rate in Rogue. I never knew about the Rogue protection value. Yeah, so if you have a weapon equipped and then play Basilisk, that is such a world of difference because let's say you are a Paladin and you play Basilisk and the opponent is also a Paladin and he makes a dude, that dude is going to connect. If you're a Rogue, <laughs> it's not going to be it. Like, you make them have the pings, right? Because if they are trying to get away with it cheap, just using 1-1s, one -ones, it's not going to work against Rogue. So Basilisk gets a lot better when you force them to have the answer because any 1-1 one -one is not going to connect unless they spam, right? And even if they play two of them, if you open up with Firefly, it's not even going to work. So Basilisk is just such an amazing card there. Uh, quicksand is good for this deck. Hallucination would not be bad, but this deck is a Quicksand deck. I don't say that too often, right? But this deck just pushes on the board, so it's quite nice. This is unfortunate. I guess we'll take reach. It's too light now. It's definitely too light. This could actually be a ticket scalper deck. Silas Ranger gets a little worse when you are this good at pushing the board early. So I think I would actually try with a ticket scalper in this deck. It's going to be annoying. We're going to slap this at the back of our push and they're going to be like, what? All right. So we have Firefly. We have Tar. That might be enough. Stormwind Knight is not the worst card in this deck. You have a Cold Blood that interacts quite well. But you have two Elementals with the option of getting one more. Blaze Caller is pretty stupid when it goes off. I'm not crafting a Golden Blaze Caller though, so then we're not getting a full Golden deck. You don't pick this often enough, and it's an epic. <laughs> so you have to see what we value more. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we wish we had Scroom over Scorch. Ah! You might still be surprised. You might still be surprised. It's hard to not like Scorcher. Even in an aggressive deck, you like, oh man, it's so dirty. How often do you play against your opponent and you're just like, man, if he has a Scorcher, I'm just done here. I feel like I have that so often. It's just a meta where you, you get 1-1s one somehow. I think I will go Blaze, but you don't get this much dust by just frivolously spending it, guys. Alright, Dark Scale's nice. Uh, we do have Pirates, funny enough, but we don't have a weapon and we just want the dude, right? Uh, probably Mermi in this deck over Betrayal. I'm just pushing right. Probably Banana Buffoon because I just don't need these guys, so... The extra banana could be quite annoying. I also have Nefer said Ritualist. Uh, could be Hypemon just to add a little bit. Do we want the Spider Tank in this deck? One, two, three, four, five. We're not really. No, we don't need it that much, so. Hypemon to kind of close out. Could be Sidekick in, the, in one of the previous packs or not? I think we just go hype on here. You jump on any late you can find? Mm, no, I don't think it's mainly that. I think it's like Scribe, for instance, right? If Scribe were a card, it would fit perfectly. But like just like Giant Mastodon, for instance, I don't, it doesn't fit at all. It's not a deck that's trying to survive. This is a deck that's trying to push. And Scribe is great for pushing, right? If you get a high main, high main would be great for pushing. Um, Bulldefist Ogre would help to push as well, so Bulldefist would be a good fit. Frozen Crusher a little bit, if you can get 8 face one time out of it, it's also nice. But I think we do like the Hype Mon, we could potentially get a little reach off it. We'll see. Oh, another Sapper here is wonderful. I'm not gonna craft a Golden right now, because it doesn't matter, but I don't mind getting two Golden Sappers if it does matter later on. 
Yeah, this is where that hype mod feels a little awkward. I think we go Wasteland Assassin here. It's actually a pretty decent minion to push with. Amani's not that great if you're on offense. It's still a good card. If I didn't have the hype mod, I'd be more open for the bear. But Assassin feels pretty straightforward. I'll I'll craft Assassin Golem. That's a common. I drafted in other classes. It's almost always oh, what I do. Oh god. Wasteland. Oh, double S twice. I only got it the first time around. Assassin is a good card. It's not a good card if you're on defense. It's a pretty good card if you're on offense. Because you're going to play this, you're going to go face, they're going to kill it, and then if they do not have a Scorcher, if they do not have a Blast Wave or anything like that, you can go face again. Or, or you can go into a Taunt. So, but on the flip side, if you are the one defending, this thing is very slow and does very little for you. So, so Warbear and Assassin there are they're, they're great contrast. One fits one game plan, the other fits another. Overall, Warbear is definitely the better card, but because we already have three seven mana cards and a worm, and our deck wants to be aggressive. I'm taking the card that can be sneaky and push some damage. We also have Cold Blood, so stealth minions are nice with that. Uh, I would say this is a low roll when it comes to the archetype you want to build. I think I would rather have some fungals to push damage with. I would rather have good six mana cards. Um, but I think we did what we were offered. And that's important in Arena. Just uh, got to go with the flow, got to go with the draft. What? One thing, yeah, we could have not had Scorcher, but I think Scorcher is still a fit. Yeah, I think if you get uh, the bit off meta deck, you're probably okay with going uh, seven wins. So we'll see. You've not drafted the Sapper card. It's good. It's good. It can be very, very annoying for your opponent. Archer on one, I wouldn't completely rule it out because of quicksand, but probably not. The death rattle feels so awkward. How so? Even if you're healing his minion, you're still dealing at least one damage to it. I think it's awkward if you think about it in terms of value, but you should think about the card in terms of tempo. I guess one of two things, trade the Berserker, Elven Archer the Berserker, Dagger the Dude, hmm. or trade the Berserker, Dagger the Berserker, put the Firefly down. You've got a 2-2 two -two and a 1-2 up against the 1-1, one -one. going into Dagger Quicksand. I think I prefer just taking the 3 in that case. I don't like leaving the Berserker up, because then he will just boop into the flame. I like taking it out like that if I can. Quicksand Elemental is pretty phenomenal here. And then you can never set. 
sort of the duo, right? The dynamic duo of the set when it comes to turn four. Pride of Consec. Um, I mean, you have two survivors. This is one of the better consecrates for you. <laughs> um, so that is fine, and that works quite well. But we could also go for Banana Buffoon plays. Okay, Banana Buffoon Dagger. Three, two... Banana Buffoon Dagger actually feels better, the more I look at it. Because then you get to go for the big heal afterwards. Uh, Banana Buffoon also keeps you out of ping range, or out of Scorcher range, or at least one. Oh, you can Dagger, but that's fine, you have the flame. Oh, you could Archer as well. Hmm. Probably Archer. I think I like keeping the banana. Yeah, for, I, I missed I missed the fact that we were paying for the banana. That's fine. This is actually needlessly risky. There was no way that we are 100% on the consec. This was needlessly risky. We're gonna get away with it. But it was very risky. Hmm. I'm a bit annoyed that I can't banana <laughs> damage something, <laughs> but it's still quite nice. So we know he doesn't have consec, that's pretty annoying for him. So I guess we just dark scale first, and then banana something else. I guess this always goes in, and then we can talk. You could put the 3-2 in and banana something else, but he hasn't had the punish yet, so why give him any respect? Just double down, right? Could have doubled banana the 3-2 as well. Yep. I think anything was better than the play I did because we weren't 100% on whether he had Consecration or not. It was sort of just dumb luck he didn't have it there. Your so, pretty good for us. Need one extra damage here. Poison, Bluegill, Eviscerate. It's not it. I'm guessing we're going to kill it then. It's only four extra health. Probably put the 2-2 two -two in and then a 1-1. One -one. So a 1 and a dagger in here. And scalper in this. I'll give it a shot. Still setting up lethal, and then you can hype mom plus battle cry next turn if you need it. I think the ticket scalper was a specific pick. Um, scalper is not a card you pick super often right now, but this deck feels like a great fit for it. Setting up overkill on the face. He played around it. Valir versus Rexar. Let 
You could have the hatchet here. Mermaid plays a little bit more around that, but meh. Even Hearth Arena's all over Repco. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty hard not to like that card. Probably going to leave him with a macaw. Quicksand, trade trades, archer. Good coin so dagger. But that seems unnecessary right now. Would you say Scalper fits a similar role as Cult Master? Yeah, it, it sort of fits in that role, where it's something to keep you going, but it only works if you have early tempo. Ooh. That's quite nice for him. It's not the end of the world, but still quite nice. Oh, especially if his entire turn is Hungry Crab, that's fine. It's like he played a 3-4 Phoenix. But the Phoenix could only target the Murloc. That's really not that good. Flanking Striker Phoenix would have just been a lot better. So we're fine. Had he gone Crap plus Spider Tank or something, that's a lot more awkward. I don't think we... Cold blood yet. We're going into baited arrow turn. Cold blood would just give him a really good target. We hear your hearts. Okay. That's definitely awkward. I think this is uh, a loss we're drawing super light against the hunter that has stuff. We've hit every single one of our one mana cards already. It's really uh, unlikely. Usually you want to draw one max two and then the rest of your deck. Alright, so part of me wants to start jamming face, but we could cold blood the 2 1 Basilisk and Dagger, uh, clear his board, and have a 4 3 and a Basilisk, making it annoying for him. You could also just Basilisk the 1 1, like Basilisk Dagger to 1 1, like cold blood the 2 1 go face. 
you want to push face, but I don't think you're... Oh. I think I'm actually... I'm always going to do the play. We'll just talk about what exactly it's going to be. So it's going to be this, 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 and this. Yeah, maybe Domum for 10 is better here. How else does this deck win, right? Here we go. I don't want to give the Sapper the extra damage, because then it's a very easy trade into the Sapper for him. No, still saps his rock. damage. Sap the 1-1, one, one, poggers. I do think that was the right call, right? If you don't, if you don't dome them for 10, how are you ever winning this game? So good for him. It's just ridiculously good. It's a one one, right? So it doesn't matter. I guess you want a 5-7 instead of a 7-5. Now that Plague Bringer is in the uh, is in the rotation, maybe Hype Mon just I mean, it gets better, right? But maybe that's common enough to push it to where you want it to be. I'm still really happy about that face play. That was... Just imagine him having 10 extra health here, right? Just 10 extra health here would be so bad for him. I guess we are trading because of that. Also means we don't have to go face to check for the Wandering. It gets a bit weird anyway. Hey, not freezing. Might be snipe. No dart trap either, so... Wandering, pressure plate, explosive, misdirection maybe. in of a straight target. Hoping it's not pressure plate. Alternatively, you could put the 5-7 in here and then you're way better off versus uh, versus explosive. Because right now, if you want to shark fin eviscerate attack, it's explosive, it's quite abysmal. So that might be the way to go, yeah. Oh, that is a low roll on all accounts. That's really sad. I don't think we can win this game with so many low rolls. If we needed this to have two health or like three health or less. Rolls a premium three drop. 
But yeah, it's crazy how light we've drawn. with a low roll draw versus a hunter is not going to feel good. But you do what you can. And I think we did that. Give ourselves a chance. Valir versus Jaina. You asked for it. Watch your back. And poison could be kept. I think I would rather just have stuff to push with. Right now I would pick Karen just because of the gap on six. But Anixia is a good card. I wonder. Because even if Karen gets Warbeard, it's not the end of the world. It's a good chance you don't even need to put uh, Bane in there. I find Banana Buffoon really annoying when my opponent just plays it here and says, I can banana now. <laughs> so I think I'll do that over to Grizzly. On the other hand, we could also Grizzly and then Sneaky go banana. Put a banana on there. But I think I would rather get it out of the way. Because you can go double banana on Neferset next turn. I'm trading mainly for Quicksand here. Yeah, it's. I think it's on player settings. Alex. Mm. Maybe just four drop and face. I don't love slowing down here and getting him to ping might be better. It's like he has to ping and then the death rattle takes the scarlet out. Yeah, it is it is a tracker option, Alex, I can guarantee it. So just just check them one by one. You'll you'll get there. You'll find it. Play it again. That's fine. For the crusade. Now we can go Grizzly Dagger, and we have the board right. Class. Uh, this is where we can do dirty things and we shall it means we do not get the basilisk down 
Uh, maybe we do. Just use the dagger. Getting Basil's down is a huge deal here. Yep. I like it. Save the flex. Here we go. And this is sort of the tempo we bought by sacrificing our four drop. He was like, oh, what a noob. I'm gonna. I mean, I don't know that, right? I just. I think the general opinion on these sap effects is pretty low because of like, oh wow, that was good for me, right? It's like, she had lost her shield, and now it's back. It was like, well, is that good for you or not? I don't know. You just, it just means that you're in a position where you lose a lot of tempo against the rogue. It's not so good. I sort of want to just banana the basilisk and... Keep it around. Maybe just let him have a 2-4. I don't know. Pushing damage is quite important. So I think we do this. Probably gonna dagger. I don't think I Elven Archer. Meteor positioning is not optimal here. Uh, I mean, it's always going to suck, let's be honest. Alright, so he's gonna blast wave and draw one card. That's okay before Worm. So Banana banana denied him a card. And I guess maybe even made him blast wave. So yeah, getting the blast wave out pre-Worm is usually not too bad. Flame Strike is too rare to play around. I just don't have a deck where if I draw like this I can play around Flame Strike. Like what would what would be your play to play around Flame Strike in this case? That's probably not gonna be pretty, right? <laughs> it's like uh just play less minions. It's like yeah, that's not a good way to play around Flame Strike. Ooh. Banana the bear, yeah. So, but then you'd have to sack your basilisk, right? Like, then I have one five. Then I have a five five for his war bear, and then there's a ran, there's another card that just wrecks me. Hmm. Uh, so we're getting seven phase, kind of no matter how we're doing it. So it's either dagger poison the one two of his the jelly seven phase, or dagger archer the one two of his the jelly. So we're always daggering. I think we always Mermi and Avis the 3 3. I guess we don't hate the Archer and save it Poison Charge. Yeah, I guess so. The archer could matter, because I don't think I kill him next turn, but the poison might be good for two turn lethal. Ay 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 ay. Oh wow, okay. Hit the mermy. No, hit the mermy, what are you doing? Hit the fucking mermy! <laughs> oh, hype mom could do work here, absolutely. Primal Fin Lookout gives me a Murloc, but Alchemist allows me to push seven. Um, so you'd Alk here, Poison, Smack, Smack, push seven, which means he goes to 11 versus this board. Or Primal Fin Lookout, pull a Murloc to. Ugh, yeah, no, that looks terrible. So, for the record, saving the archer and using the poison would have worked out quite a bit better this turn. I don't like decks where I'm forced to push damage right now. It's a lot of punishes, like, for instance, card tip defender. That is very slow, though. You 
Yeah, I think every win for this deck is just like a... Whew. All right, we got him. I don't like that feeling, right, of having to push like that. But I don't think we can do much else with the draft we were given. We were just given a very aggressive draft. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm not some kind of arena robot or anything, Alex. Just the guy that plays arena. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So we're getting a giant fire on this portal on seven. Exactly what I talked about, right? Why Basilisk is better in Rogue. Here we go. Yeah, the Hunter deck was very, very high quality, very smooth. back on the other one for turn six. Keep the chat in English, guys. grow back quicksand elemental is also an elemental mm -hmm. so many the sapper better worse more awkward than expected feels more awkward than I expected um, for me it's just been good so far Nothing too crazy. I don't want to be forced into quicksand next turn. But playing another flame elemental could obviously do a lot of work now. is going to two right so we could just dagger Saving the Nefer sets to heal the Blaze Colors, not terrible. 
but I think we want tempo right now. Get these off of me. That fits. I guess the quicksand and the face. I think I'd rather keep this healthy. Alternatively, two, four, one, and face, but then he can stab it, so it's fine. I like to keep it healthy because I'm trying to set up a dark scale healer turn. So minions with more max health are quite useful though. Puzzle box, yay or nay? I cannot I cannot deny that it can do some crazy stuff. When you're down, it's really it's statistically pretty good when you're down. It's one of those cards. Aldor has been phenomenal. All right. <clears throat> I can put the one six in. I can put the two in. So many. Archer, trade, dagger, dark scale. I don't fancy giving him a board here. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. We're gonna run out of steam soon. At least we could start pushing. We're dealing with his board pretty efficiently, but the um, uh, okay. but the Aldor gave him so much. That was really not good for us. Aha, that is perfect. Perfect, I say. If he has a Primordial Drake, we can pack up. So let's hope he doesn't have a Primordial Drake. So no primordial Drake. Ash to ash. I'm uh, definitely fine keeping this alive, which means we probably put the four or five in here. And then a 1-1 one, one in, and then dagger into 1-1s. One, Alternatively, no dagger. Let's see. This happens. This happens. I think I definitely want to get the sapper down to play around like a 10-10 taunt or something stupid. Nobody leaves these ruins but me. Trade, trade, dagger. I think I want the power, so I get the wasteland out. Could save it for Avis, but it's probably better on board. Alright, so we're one off even with the extra power we added.
<laughs> That's quite specifically annoying. That minion already attacked. Oh, I can't kill anything off? Oh, that's fine. We can use this next turn anyway. Oh, did I do that wrong? No, right? Maybe. Well, maybe. Maybe. Very maybe. There was no way? Yeah, you could just... Um, you could use face into a 1-1 one, one, and then sacrifice a flame into the 4 damage guy sort of for free probably not worth playing Griftler right now yeah 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 I agree that's some cool cards you got there bro we dodged that for long enough Right. But yeah, another game where it's just like, oh man, we're on a shaky deck, just pushing. The Aldor was really, really good. Without the Aldor, this would have been done a couple turns ago. Valera versus Rexa. Let the hunt begin. Watch your. Just Marmy seems fine here. We have a dagger, so better to look for the other stuff. Yeah, I think it. I think the the hype mon turn was all right. Now that I think about it. Let's see if we win the game on turn two. Smiley face. Come on, play a 2-2, two, two, no pre-hit. You can play a gastropod. Oh. Oh. And then pre-hit. Play the other one, pre-hit. Pre-hit. Come on, here we go. Hit it. Hit it. You were supposed to hit it. Whee. Stupid combo. Turn 2, 2-6, two, and a 2-3. Let's go. Dragon Slayer here to start pushing damage is not bad, but it curves perfectly into flanking strike, and getting a dagger out before you start spamming the sapper and saving Dragon Slayer for a scorcher is not that crazy. Hmm. So I think I will go for the play around flanking strike a little bit. I'll take a bit more damage here, keep the taunt healthy. Because we know we're going to play Sapper next turn, so we won't be able to dagger. So I think it's okay to get the dagger out right now, save the powerful battle cry, and don't give him a perfect flanking target. Now flanking strike is awkward. That is not good enough. We're quite happy to deal with that. So next turn he could scorch her, so we're going to incentivize him. We're going to make it look like the scorcher is really good for him. This is also an immediate check. If he doesn't scorch her here, he probably doesn't have it, which means this can be tempoed a lot easier. But no reason to tempo it over a scalper. Top three classes, Rogue Hunter, and then Mage Warlock, maybe even Paladin, 
probably not Paladin. I like it, but you need to know what you're doing. So a safe estimate is probably Mage Warlock split on number three. Did he forget, or what was this? You could honestly just push face, but if you draw the cards here, it's probably pretty hard to lose. No refund. That's funny, the game where I got the 2-6 on turn 2 for free felt a lot easier. I wonder. I think I just push damage. Who are the bearded people on the pictures on your wall? Oh damn. Got bad news for you, my man. Classic Rogue dismantling a zoo opener. <laughs> Extraordinary. It's just regular black coffee they shove. Nothing too specific. Oh wow. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This deck really misses like two fungal mancers. I give this deck two fungal mancers and suddenly it flows much, much nicer. Which is not for that many decks, this expansion. I don't think that many decks are real fungal mancer decks, but this is a real fungal mancer deck. So many possible. Cold Blood, the Bluegill on four. Uh, could be Cold Blood, the Tar on four. Let's see what he plays. Just give it to Fungal Mancers. Well, I mean, are you playing Mancer or not? Because I, I think a lot of decks, they don't really feel like Fungal Mancer decks. I think there's a bit too much pressure from other rogues and other rogues and hunters for moving stuff. It's a bit too easy for them.
Here we go. So this always happens. I would love to do that, but that pre-hit has made me a little wary. Feeding time in particular would be very annoying. Force Hellfire? It's not Hellfire I'm afraid of. It's feeding time. That is exceptionally bad if we go... Bluegill, cold blood, no dagger. The dagger makes the feeding time somewhat bearable. Not good, but bearable. Because you go 5 drop next turn. What does feeding time do? Deal 3 damage, summon 3 one ones. The pre-head sort of... I mean, if he doesn't do anything here, then we're still happy. I don't know. Possibilities. Rippy flippy. That is fine for now. Oh, I thought you were uh I thought you were the one account or the the, the two minute account guy, Rocknar. <laughs> it sounded pretty troll. <laughs> it's alright though. It's alright. I think we go for the dark scale. Even though the bananas are interesting. I don't think I want to assassin yet. I think I want to assassin later on. What else do we have? Yeah, I think I'll let him have the trade. It's fine. I'm glad that you are so confident in your abilities that roping is rarely the right play, uh, Rocknar. I'm not there yet, so I need a little bit more time. Thank you for understanding. Hey, Trickster. Getting old, yeah. Getting real old. So, again, with putting it to three, it could simply be for the trade for the phoenix uh, but i think we're gonna play a little bit around it right it's actually pretty annoying you i'm not seeing it right now Maybe it's actually sack the ew. Ew. I can't be right. No, we're we're gonna just have to play into it, I think. Could also just go assassin and push. No, I think you make him have it. Here we go. 
So then Hellfire, he goes to 12, you hype mon. If you let him have this trait, what are you doing, right? What are you doing? I actually don't really rope as much uh, recently, but this this deck is quite difficult. I haven't been playing this kind of... Because with this kind of deck, you always need to think about setting up lethal, right? Uh, we got him, right? Yeah, we got him. These are, these are quite difficult decks to play. I will fight with honor. Watch your back. Hmm. We're gonna tar early, so I don't think we keep it. I don't think your statement makes that much sense than Rocknar if you meant it in that way. Because you're saying there's rarely a good reason to rope. So to me, that means that you're saying that winning is not a good reason. And not winning in terms of annoying the opponent. But winning in terms of making significantly better plays. It's either that or you're underestimating how much you can affect your result in Hearthstone. If you assume it's just RNG and play on curve, XD, lol, 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 then I can guess I can kind of see it. But if you believe that, you can affect your win rates by actually thinking a little bit about the game. Then I don't think your statement holds. <sighs> I think I play around Stegadon and take the trade. He's playing really slow and feels a little Stegadon-ish. On the other hand, he could also Kings. Ugh. It's actually a little awkward. I'm gonna have Basilisk to go into a 5 5, right? I don't care if he kings. But I do care about Stegadon. True Silver Hit is probably the more annoying one. Yeah, let him kings. Kings is not a problem. This play would be a lot, a lot easier if I had Dragon Sayer in hand. I wonder. I'm trying to see if there's a way around it. I think, I think there is. There's like Bluegill into the 2-2 and then Dagger. I think that's better. I don't want to run into Scorcher with the Basilisk losing its shield. That's too annoying. If I have Dragon Slayer in the hand, sure, but it's too annoying if he Scorchers and you go for the Shark Fin play. Mm 
short like a butterfly. All right, we're getting the hits. That's great. Feels like we get the scalper down and an next turn two two dagger. Hoping for no Golaka Crawler. That would be annoying. We can get our two cards if he wants, or we can just smack him in the face. <clears throat> I'm not opposed to smacking him in the face. Any merit in preserving the bubble? going elven of this last rounds uh not so much you are still an aggressive deck so bubble to deal five damage is a good deal it's just that giving up the bubble specifically into the scorcher turn there was really bad Let me... the, the point of the basilisk is to allow you to get board control and push damage so if you if you have board control and you're there for then not pushing damage because you're still preserving the bubble it, it gets its more uh, negative effect. Elven Elvis. Your soul shall be mine. Watch your. All right, tone it down, Fat Panda. You've been here before, all right, now you're back. Like, it's not so much fun, so. Either be real or just don't. <laughs> I don't have the energy for that. The sap is really nice, but I think we just wanna curve early, right? All right, that is curving early. We do have the Dragon Slayer, so we might play into Scorcher. <laughs> Let's see if we coin Tar or just Dagger. Could be awkward. Oh, perfect. Kind of a nice in between play. Yeah, it's the same as holding removal for too long, Mercer Sky. If you are an aggressive deck, there comes a point where using removal is just good to push phase damage with. So then you just do it. Ooh, baby. I don't need any of you. And the basilisk in that case is just removal, but it's already developed. Not good for him. Yeah, I mean, you'd rather not box, but you box when you're not super likely to win, and then it's pretty good on average. <laughs> Could get a little bit awkward. We'll see. 
You can't get over how blue the reborn effect is. Yeah, I've I've I've, I've played so much already that I'm not. I don't care anymore. But at the start, it was like, whoa, what the hell? It's all right. I don't think I want the one charge deadly, even if I scorch her, so poking is probably okay. Wasn't Dragon Slayer better this turn for more power? I like the Slayer after their turn 5. Sometimes I just scorch her for tempo and then just win the game. It's pretty silly. Shadow Flame is good. May get a 4 1. I don't want to bother killing that. I guess I try to dagger the Moshog and then Scorcher is likely to be good. Even if I end up missing into his face, it's probably okay. I could try to Warbear his face, but <laughs> that's too RNG, I think. It's pretty funny when it happens. I think I will attempt to uh, trade with the thing. For me. Gotcha. Game decides. Go face. Now the Shadow Flame is more annoying. Let me help you out there, mister. No. Four, six, eight. Getting close. Cards on board. Uh oh. Dread Infernal Spellstone, the three getting. Oh my god, that's so bad. Oh. Oh, that is. 
is rough. I didn't see that coming. I was thinking of holding the blue gel. I guess spellstone, it's more common they heal now. My bad. Crazy good turn. Yeah, it's my bad though. You should probably not uh, play it that way. This was a win if we play it properly. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with losing if you make mistakes, right? Eviscerate and out. Yep. I would have been really specific, draw cold blood, but we would have won. I should have probably just held it back. It was too easy for him to kill it. Your soul shall be mine. Your soul shall be mine. How was this a good idea to print this card? I don't know. Free stick it on. Let's go. We're going choo choo chat. Choo choo. Extraordinary. Incredible. 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 Another soul. What? Not a dragon. I'll play the lone champion for one turn. Uh, because we're gonna open up drag we're gonna open up Dragon Sayer on the Scorcher. Alright my man. Play your Scorcher card and let's call it a day. Shadow Flame is fine, right? Sure, Shadow. Go for it, man. So if he Shadow Flames, I play this into Blaze, into Hype Mon Dude. Hellfire is not annoying enough. Doesn't have it. Is that a Dread Infernal? No, that's not a Dread Infernal. Makes you wonder if you want to play around it here or not. I think you play into it, yeah. It's an off curve Dread Inferno. Oh, 
incredible. The man unlocks his war bears. Impressed here. Quicksand is like a power word shield for your 6 6. Bizarre Mugger gives you a random extra minion, and it's a, it's a 1 1 rusher. Thank you. So if he goes like a taunt, he's dead anyway. We have Sap. So how does he beat us? Well. I guess I'll go for the Bizarre Rusher and just put the Worgen down. We've given him Dread, we've given him Scorcher, he hasn't accepted, so... I guess it's okay. One or three out on the Blaze could matter out. I agree, but we sort of, uh, we test it for it. He also can Void Lord and do the other things. Beat down. Played a lot better that game. We got a 2 6 out on turn 2. Much better performance. Alright, we made it to 7. That's good. Because this was a bit of a, like, eh. Check what the rush card is, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. It's so weird. <laughs> Who the fuck made that, man? Who thought that was a good idea? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Let's see if he has it. Why not the two ones? Mm, just gives up a lot of flexibility. Oh, Ice Ox, so down. Someone <laughs> Your entire chat is AI. Full AI mode, I see. All the cuties in chat. I want to cold blood, but I also want to kill this 4-4 in a non-awkward manner. Uh, that might help. Nope. It doesn't even come close to helping. I might sap it, I don't know. Ooh. Scorcher is going to be so annoying if I do what I want to do. 
Next turn, I have to flame elemental. I could sap the 4 or 5 and go for the Deadly Poison play now. Might just be the play. 2 mana deal 5 is pretty good here. Because what I want to do, or what I wanted to do was Dagger, Poison, face a Mermy into the 4-4, four, four, Cold Blood the 2-4 and just Smark. But then he will Scorch her, trade my guy and it's really awkward to win from there so i think we sapped the four or five because it's been a little bit too annoying Here we go. and then next turn it's flame elemental to set up blaze collar maybe cold blood Looks like a really good turn to start popping off with the cold blood. I guess if I quicksand for tempo, I would attack it with my face first, then quicksand, then free kill it with the one two. I think that is better than, you know, saving the weapon. And I think it's good for tempo, yeah. Here we go. Storm. Storm was okay before, and we put the Cold Blood on the 4 health minion. Volcano is another one. What about the Elemental? Uh, Quicksand Elemental is an Elemental. As the name suggests. <laughs> Alright. We have... Oh no, he healed. He's out of lethal range. Hmm... He healed out of lethal range, chat. So now my problem would be Earthquake. If he war bears next turn, does he get there? 3-3 three, three into the 1-1, one, 4-5 one, into the 6-4, Warbearer 3-2, he is on 2, I have to use, no, he's not alive, so Warbearer doesn't save him. I think we full smork against the Earthquake then, yeah. That's the best defense against the AoE. Just cash in on the face damage. Because the, the main problem here is Earthquake. So the best play around it is just put him to two. You can put him to one next turn and play again. Yep. It's the first time I think I've seen it. Hey. You can lose this very, very easily, right? That's why I mean, these decks are tough to play. You need to really find a moment to push.
Yeah, he did miss damage. That's true. Sapper's pretty good, and it gives us something for the mid game. But it means we're gonna lower the chance for turn three plays. We've not been keeping it, and it's been fine. Maybe. We'll see. If he has a slow opener, the banana buffoon could be good. Oh, that's nice as well. I'm not a big fan of banana buffoon, but when you have a low curve like this, it gets a lot better. It's awkward for the opponent. Schlack mage. Mm, Elven Archer, Coin Dagger. Into a 3-drop, into Banana. Probably okay. Why not put him to 7 and hold the 5 for next turn? The 6-6 six, six body is more annoying to deal with. If our opponent doesn't have specifically Earthquake. One shot, one Blaze Call has been a good pickup. New secrets. Pretty annoying. So many options. So many I think I definitely do want to check face. Yeah, man, the new secrets are really tough to play around. I think we found the best way, though. This this was solid. <laughs> but you have to account for, okay, so what if it is, like, mirror after I attack? What if it's this? What if it's that? Like, So banana leeches two mana here, which is kind of nice. Here we go. I 
I won't have mana for a while, so I think I'm gonna preload to poison. I'm gonna hold the elemental for base. I'm going to bear into worm, so two turns where I don't get to equip the poison. Uh, it's just because of mage in general. Not pushing damage against the mage has much larger consequences or much bigger consequences than push not pushing damage against the hunter. I guess I can just go hype mon now, because I wouldn't. If I war bear, I wouldn't take damage on the bear to begin with. So, I'll just hype mon instead. <laughs> no. I guess the ankle biter, right? I don't even think it's the right pick, but even if it were the right pick, a lot would have to be at stake for me to pick MC Tech there. So he could have stolen the one one, yeah. What am I doing? Uh? Many options. This is where it's a bit uh, interesting. If I pre-trade with the 1-1, one -one, he kind of knows what's up. That's a problem. Dragon? I'm aware I have a Scorcher in my hand. But if you trade it right now, it seems wrong. If I had 9 mana, I would do it. I do think this is the way to go. It's just awkward. You're giving him a lot of information. You just trade Blast Wave, fill his entire hand. Well, let's see. How is Counter Worm? I, I think it's the only way to go. It's just you need to trade the 1-1 one, one if you don't want to take the 7, if he trades here. And yeah, now we're going to lose. Ugh. We might get there, it depends on his reach. So if he doesn't have reach, big punish. If he has reach, doesn't matter. So yeah, Sap is a good card, eh? Sap in a meta with Violet Worm is an even better card. You're in my hands now. Blizzard? It's probably one of the only spells. Oh wow, he actually has a Nova and a Duck, okay. I was gonna say Blizzard's probably one of the only spells you quite reliably have that works here, but he just has a Nova. Oh, Dark Scale Healer will surely mess with his uh, calculations here. And I think we just go all in now. Sap just 100% turning this game around. So crazy. Oh, uh -oh. we could still lose. We could still lose. So crazy, man. So crazy. Discover a Nova from the deck, and now discover not another Nova. Okay. Well, maybe you still trade a Nova. Who knows? Mirror images won't work. 
another cone. Hmm, okay. Oh, he's maybe trying to bounce. Oh, he's trying to bounce it to find an out next turn. Okay. Sure. I can see that. It's kind of desperate, but I can see it. <laughs> no longer necessary. Feels like just dagger pass. This is going to be too useful. He has a worm in hand. I don't think this matters yet. Looking for lethal. Ah, uh, that's really hard to do, though. Five of his mana is going to be dedicated to that thing. So then he needs to deal 12 damage on five mana. You want it? I, got it. I think he's just looking for a freeze or something, right? You found it? Ooh. Now it could be bad. Looks, it feels like he has um, Flame Strike in the hand, right? I'm gonna heal for one here. Start off with that. Yeah, I think I, uh, I don't think he gets to clear Ant, Taunt, and everything. So I think that pushing the damage makes more sense than killing that thing. I don't think playing Never Said Ritualists makes enough of a difference. I don't think he can avoid lethal, but uh, something with multiple taunts and us being able to trade and heal up makes me think it's better to hold it. I don't know. I think he either kills me or I kill him next turn. I don't think there's an in-between here. I don't think there's a... Uh... Yeah, there's no compromise here. I think one person loses right now. He agrees. Very, very, very clutch sap. That's a pretty good curve, I'll keep that. Getting there with our little budget rogue. An incredible uh, yeah, we've got a fiver. It was still pretty okay, but it was just one of those runs where stuff happened. I don't Here we go. Might need to play Buffoon next turn, or even Sharkfin Fan. We'll see if he plays the secret or not. Hmm. Yeah, we've had one five win rogue. Candles. Yeah, just don't pre hit. I agree. Why, w why would you pre hit here? It sounds really stupid, right? <laughs> All right. Down. I'm a doctor. 
Pilgerman44. Thank you for using Twitch Prime here. Welcome to the stream, and once again, thank you so much for supporting. Winners moves, empires fall. Yeah, Rogue is Rogue is phenomenal right now, for sure. Mm, banana feels sweet here. Probably double banana. Hmm. Next turn, dagger scalper into warbear into worm. Mm, we have never set. We should probably position for that. <laughs> Preserve that for blast wave. Yeah, we could save a banana for the secret. It's correct. But blast wave is pretty annoying if I don't buff that. Flame ward? He could flame ward. That is true. Alright. So I get to keep one minion? Yeah, I get to keep my dude. I don't want to bounce the Flak Mage, so I'm going to have to trade, I think, right? Yeah, we're gonna have to trade. Yeah, it, it does feel that from his hesitation he has multiple secrets. Yeah, Flak Mage is... Um, that's an anomaly. I think Flak, in, in this meta especially, it's a bit faster. Flak Mage is just like, what the hell, right? Like, what were you thinking? I, wonder. I think we take a scalper and sap his scalper if it's... Uh, I guess maybe I should just play Sharkfin Fan in case it's runes. And then sap his Sharkfin Fan instead and just screw the dagger. I think I would have preferred Scalper Dagger, but runes would have been really bad. Oh, let's go. Did you just play an 8-8? Eight, eight? Let's get rid of that. He can blast wave ping, so I think I prefer Dragon Slayer. But I don't think we call blood. The dagger pushes one as well, so you're only missing out on three. And you get the dude. It wouldn't have been crazy to call blood overkill, but it's a mage, and you're sapping an 8 8. But it wasn't crazy, Cold Blood uh, Ticket Scalper trade. But most of the most of the resources should be spent attacking his face. So this is either going to be Worm Pass or Push to Five Worm Pass. I think given that the scalper is card draw, I will probably go for worm pass. If it's mirror, I, I think I might <laughs> I think I legit prefer that to be mirror entity. <laughs> How fucked up is a secret if I would rather play worm into a mirror entity? <laughs> wow, that's when you know it's good, right? I would I would just rather play a worm into mirror entity than that to be uh the thing. Oh my god. All right, I think it's I think it's past one turn. You've got the um, you've got the scalper for draw. Okay, 
All right. So it could be splitting image debates, but then we might just murder him, right? Interesting that he did give us the draw. Maybe he forgot about that specific interaction. I don't know. So we'll take our cards here and then... Oh, we can push more face, can we? Can we? Uh, it's at the expense. Uh, never mind. I have to pay 8 health to push like 1 extra or 2 extra damage. If he pit crocs that, I just go all over him, right? Should be really hard to deal with for him. Buff the Murloc. I want a Cold Blood. I want to hold the Blue Gill for reach. It's a good turn for. It's a good turn for Cold Blood. Am I not tested the 1-1 one, one for vape? Uh, because then I miss one damage. Try to win a game. <laughs> hmm. I feel like this doesn't go off against Rogue. This is sad and Dagger will do. So, Who makes this mulligan, right? <laughs> Who gets this hand and is like, ah, I'm just gonna keep this guy. <laughs> He's like, oh god, don't have it. And I'm like, oh god, please stop the kid. <laughs> now, I, I think it was just well-constructed toaster salads. We, we knew what kind of deck we had, and we didn't bother. Like, I skipped the worm pretty early on for... Uh, for Sapper, I think, and I do not regret it whatsoever. Felt like it's been the right call. His decision here matters quite a bit. I think he's trying to think of the punish and he can't think of it right now. And we're about to show him the punish. So next time he's like, ah, oh, right, okay, I guess I pre it. <laughs> Our opponent has learned, because he, you could see he was giving it some real consideration. There's a lot of specific interactions that can happen. This is also such a good deck for quicksand. Quicksand and effort sets, they work a lot better in these kind of decks. There were punishes for hitting in, to be fair. I mean, punishes in terms of health, right? I don't think I get more board control. Yeah, 
Yeah, backstab we passed in favor of Abyss. Feels like the deck needs reach more than backstab. He's like, okay. <laughs> How should I should I free it or not? <laughs> okay. Oh, this poor guy. Right. Oh no. No, I was gonna no. This is better though, right? Is it? I have a 2-4. It's just like he's gonna go like Sapper or something, right? And then it's awkward. Like, I'm really thinking Deadly Poison just suits better. Fungal Enchanter? Yeah, but that doesn't make a difference. Fungal is always gonna own him. Right? If I have healing, he always gets owned. I like this more. We have 5 power. The dagger doesn't do much. If I loan, the dagger is already paid for. He bops the shield off. It's worse, I think. Phoenix? Yeah, if you Phoenix, I could just use face to kill it. Put a separate uh, scalper down. Fine. I'll put it on your hand. You know, pretty much exactly this, right? Well, maybe not exactly this, but quite likely this. It just gets a lot more annoying if I go loan here and he trades and then it's like... Ugh. Now I can kill it and scalper or kill it and loan. But I think scalper, even though it's quite vulnerable. Here we go. This may be a stupid question, but how does one break the meta when cards are picked at random? Mm, they're not entirely random, uh, Nas. A place to hide. There are quite a bit of... Um, oh my god, this turn. There are quite a bit of ways to influence your drafts. Um, chat, why, do, why don't you explain? I'm gonna think about how I don't get wrecked here. I can't find the answer. Can't find the answer! <laughs> Maybe there is no answer. Monka W. I don't need I'm always surprised to see people picking Scalper. Yeah, Scalper's usually not the pick, but this is a Scalper deck. This this is a Scalper deck for sure. This is a deck where you push early and you can use the refill. I think a lot of decks are not Scalper decks right now. But this is a specific one. This is where just draft experience helps you out. Um, a lot of the Rogue decks I would draft differently, but this one got pushed into this direction, so I was like, okay, I guess we're doing it. Like, to give you an example, the run we did before this was 12-0. This run is 10-2. and two. Like, if everything is random, that shouldn't be possible, right? So we are thinking of... Okay, how likely is it that we get offered this number of 2 mana cards, 3 mana cards, 4 mana cards, and so on and so on? Oh, that is so annoying. This guy, could he fucking not? <laughs> ah! Alright, I can't explain. I need to play. Oh my god. How dare you, sir? How dare you have a good answer to my turn? We might just have to scorch her, kill it, and just accept the feat. The Eviscerate is nice. If we had a juicy, say, Tar Creeper Eviscerate, we would go for that. But, nah. That was a really, really solid heal by him. It was, uh, it was well played. Here we go. For me! Well What are the main cards in the deck that push you towards Scalper? It's more just the general structure of the deck. We we got an early Eviscerate, we got an early Cold Blood, and our curve was light. So those are all kind of pluses. Those are all boxes that are being checked for like, yeah, it's probably more of a Scalper deck. 
Now you showed him it was a good play. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, give our opponent a genuine well played there. Oh, uh, you'd be surprised how uh, how different the drafts are in Oz. Even just a really good other or infinite arena player, Collins. We were we were doing co-ops yesterday, and we were picking very different. We had different priorities, and our curves looked different. So, yeah, just just imagine having the option to pick a card thirty times in a row. How many variations there are? There's a lot of different things you can do. Yeah, we're dead, chat. We're like super dead. Super duper dead. We could also just lethal him. Ha ha ha. So I'm guessing we bar bear. And then assume he drops the worm, and then we sap, and then maybe, maybe, just maybe. Oh, is he here? Oh. Meh. Oh, whatever. It's fine. Yeah, also the heal on his 4-2 was nice then. Hmm. Then maybe I regret giving him the well played. That's a little lame. You could have sapped the one and two, but I think you just assume you find healing. Oh well. Still, 10 wins with this list. Cannot complain. Did our best.